Hey guys, welcome to Bluff Check. Today I'm going to be talking about multi-classing or cross-classing. This is when, instead of just taking one class at every level in D&D or Pathfinder or some other class-based system, you take multiple different classes. And the question was how I deal with those, and my answer is that I usually don't. There's only one time when I do, um, and I, but sometimes you get an idea for a character where cross-classing makes sense. You're like, oh, he's a, um, he's a monk but he's a very stealthy monk who focuses on assassination, then you could potentially build a monk rogue. And that could be a really cool character that builds out really well, and multi-classing might at first seem like the best way to do that. But I have a couple ways for it not to be. So the first way is when I do multi-class, and this is when I want to get a prestige class. Prestige classes are these super classes. They're a little bit better than most of the other classes, but they have prerequisites that you have to meet before you can start taking ranks in them. So for example, the the, um, the Arcane Trickster, which is a wizard or a sorcerer who is sneaky and tricky and uses sneak attack with spells, um, their restrictions are you have to be non-lawful in order to play one, you need four ranks of Disable Device, Escape Artist, and Knowledge Arcana. You need to be able to cast Mage Hand and at least one Arcane spell of, the, of second level or higher, and you need a 2d6 Sneak Attack. So that means you can't take that right off the bat. So if I really wanted to play an Arcane Trickster, I would start specking in to alternate levels of Rogue or Wizard, or do a couple Rogue, then a couple Wizard or Sorcerer. And that is, that's the way that I would build towards an Arcane Trickster. So prestige classes, uh, trying to get a prestige class is the only time I would go into multi-classing. Other things you can do to avoid multi-classing, so let's say that you want to do this sneaky monk again. You could potentially just build a monk who is sneaky. There's no rule that says you can't be doing that, and you sure, you wouldn't get the bonus sneak attack damage, but you don't necessarily need that to play the character. If you're just if you want to play the character and that's your motivation, then you can just take whichever class you think is closest and spec into stuff that is monk like or roguelike, depending on which one you pick. So you can do it that way through feats and through what skills you take. Uh, you can really craft your character mechanically to work with how you roleplay them. And then the other option is to use hybrid classes. These are in Pathfinder and these are some really cool combinations of classes. So let's play you, let's say you wanted to play a hand, a fighter who uses their hands. You might be tempted to multi-class monk and fighter because monk get the bonus hand damage and fighters are the fighter types. What a surprise. But there's a, a multi-class, a, a hybrid class of monk fighter that already exists that you can start taking at level one and then you can have your character that works the way you want, you want without having to deal with suboptimal multi-classing. And multiclassing, because of the way that classes scale, is almost always suboptimal, and extremely suboptimal at that. And this is sort of the problem that class-based systems versus non-class-based systems run into. They both have pros and cons, and it mostly, for me, pans out like this. A class-based system is nice in that it provides a lot of structure, and you don't have to look at all the rules to play a class. So, for example, if you're playing a ranger, there's that nice couple of pages of ranger information, and aside from looking through feats and equipment, that's really all you need to know is the ranger stuff, if you're just playing a ranger. In a non-class-based system, you need to be looking through everything, because everything is an option. Um, so it is maybe a bit more intimidating to build a character in a non-class-based system. The advantage that non-class-based systems have is that versatility, that you can build your character to fit exactly the niche that you want them to fit, and that's where multi-classing has to come in, in class-based systems, when none of the classes quite meet what you want, and sometimes there won't be a hybrid class or a prestige class that meets what your character wants, and at that point, either you can multi-class, you just have to be aware that multi-classing isn't usually an optimal way to build a character, although I'm sure there are optimizations for multi-classing. And then your other option is just to play a class or a hybrid class or work towards a prestige class that's close and then with feats and skills and roleplay have that character fit whatever niche you're going for. So this might not be the most useful video about multi-classing so I basically say don't do it. 
But that is my advice. Don't do it. Look at hybrid classes, look at prestige classes, and just try and roleplay your character without multiclassing. And that's all for this week. Thank hey guys, this video topic was suggested by Kogan Finney. If you have a topic that you'd like to hear my thoughts on, go ahead and leave that in the comments. You can also use the comments to let me know what you thought of this video. Uh, if you disagreed, if you agreed, if you have more that you think I could say about it, go ahead and let me know. You can also click here to subscribe. And most of all, thanks for watching. Bye.